Hi, I'm Sean, and this is my guide to Darkest Hour, a Hearts of Iron game. The best World War II strategy simulation game ever made, period. If I had to give this game a rating out of 10, it would get a 20. Paradox made four games in this series, Hearts of Iron 1, Hearts of Iron 2, Hearts of Iron 3, and 4. I never played the others, but I had Hearts of Iron uh, 2 and all the expansions, and I loved that game to death. Uh, I played it insanely. But the only thing that put me off that game was the fact that the AI wasn't that strong, so you were able to beat it in the end, and it didn't use nukes. Well, this Darkest Hour is a mod of Heart of Iron 2, and the modders in this game knew what they were doing. They've made it insanely detailed, insanely flavorful, and the AI is damn good in this game. It'll, it'll punish you when you make mistakes, and it looks for your weaknesses, and it also uses nukes. So I'm going to do a brief guide on this and on other videos I'm going to play through as one of the countries. <clears throat> so let's just have a look at the, <clears throat> there's the opening interface. And now you've got all your tutorials. You can come and, you know, learn how learn the game. You've got single player, multiplayer and credits. Let's go to the single player. So here are all the scenarios. And it also includes a World War, World War I scenario, 1914 scenario which has to be the greatest ever World War I scenario ever made. And I play lots of strategy games, I can tell you this, and war games. Nothing on the market comes close to this game. Nothing. So, yeah, you can play as the Great War. I don't play the Great War a lot because I'm not really interested in World War I. It's a very static trench warfare. I'm very much interested in military history, especially World War II, because of the combined arms uh, focus and mobility in the battlefield. So, yeah, you can play as World War One. You, you've got all your very, and then it starts with all your various scenarios leading up, campaign scenarios leading up to 1945 for World War Two, And then you've got two other just short battle scenarios that you can pick as well. I'm going to load this game for 1942, um, and I'm going to pick Germany. And, for example, also, if you look at, I've got all these countries that I can pick to play, and each country that you pick has a uniquely uh, scenario a unique uh, uh, story about it, which you can read it, which uniquely fits that country at that time. And you can play as any single country in this game uh, that was was available at the time. And all the ministers and the tanks, the land forces and the infantry was all very uniquely crafted to that country. For example, if I right click on here, then I've got all these countries I can play. Uh, I can play as Mongolia, Mexico, uh, Nepal. I can actually load up Nepal and I will get a whole big story on the history of Nepal, and I can actually now go and play that game, and it will be uniquely suited for that particular nation during during the Second World War. Amazing, amazing game. <clears throat> I'm going to pick Germany, so let me go back. Um, you've also got an options before you play, uh, where you can just select the difficulty level and various uh, options that you want to pick. Um, so let's pick. Let's start with Germany. Let's go back, and let's load up. Uh, this game and I'll go through the basically through the interface of the game very briefly I'm going to try and you can't do justice to this game in the short amount of time that I'm going to go through it but I'm going to do my best I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a good shot at it so um, and I'm going to try and highlight the most important aspects and the advantages and the, and the characteristics of this awesome amazing war game best ever made ever period uh, there's nothing that compares to it So here we start, that's how the game starts in 1942, I'm just going to pause it quickly, and it starts, it opens up with a standard scenario, which you can play to 1963 as well, it's got all the technologies right up to 1963 for your, your nation. So I'm going to start the game, uh, this is just the hints, and a policy can be changed, and then you've also got uh, the decisions that it tells you about. So let's just start the game quickly with an overview of the interface. Uh, first on the top right hand corner of the game. Now, let me just give you an idea of this game. There's, you can scroll in and out. I'm playing as Germany, and you've got all your various countries. You can go and play as Japan. So we're going to have a look at Japan. I could have picked it. What an honor to play Japan. I mean, to just be able to try and play Japan in this realistic simulation and try and, you know, overcome that. See if you can overcome the allies and their, you know, industry and their, their numerical advantages. Um, yeah, so I will definitely play Japan at some stage, but I, you know, I, Germany is my favorite country um, that I like to play, so <laughs> we'll start with that. So let's just have a look. 
Here's the, uh, you look at my mouse, just follow my mouse. This is the provinces and it highlights all the various provinces in your nation and you can go directly to a province if you click on that. And it also, you can sift it for industry, resources, uh, combats and that sort of thing. Then you've got decisions. Now the decisions what changed this game for me. What Darkest Eyes did was they incorporated the decision concept in this game where you can decide when to go to war and decide when to make decisions that suit your nation at whatever time. So it's very re replayable because <clears throat> you don't have to go to war at the specific times when they went to war. You can decide and it's a balancing act. And I'll give you an idea, for example, I can do negotiations with Turkey and it gives you a nice picture and I've got various, I can pick, you get a little story and I can pick what I, you know, want to, and the effects is not always immediate. So this is, keeps you in suspense. The decisions are what makes this game such a standout, awesome, uh, realistic uh, game. Um, yeah, so for example, now I can produce desert equipment. I obviously discovered this in technology. Technology lives and breathes in this game. I'll go a little bit briefly through the technology screen just a bit later, but to give you an idea, the technology is intertwined in this game. You cannot, there's lots of technologies that you research <clears throat> that you that you have to then later on pay for. It's not like just upgrading your tank and you've got all the statistics for your tank and off you go like other games. In this technology, you pay for your, for your technology, for what you discover. It's not just given to you for free. For example, uh, desert equipment, which I discovered in my technology tree. Now it, it gives me an, an uh, <clears throat> which I can decide to take where I can then implement this this technology decision. <clears throat> but look how here what happens here. If you look at the tooltip, it now here's the thing. It now costs me cost me research time. There's an effect that's on my industry and my nation as a whole for having discovered that tech. What a what a awesome awesome idea they came up with here. And also various other things, uh, transport, uh, Africa core, all these decisions over here. Okay, then you can view your armies. You can view all your armies in all the different various provinces. These are all your commanders and your armies. You can go directly to that province where you have that HQ or that land division or, or stuff like that. Same with your, your air force. You can then select one and you'll go to, it'll take you directly there. This is, this hot buttons is just to help you. Same with your naval. You go directly to this guy who's in charge of the sub. And you've got combats and you've got your force puller. I'm just going to run it so it can just update it. Now it has all these menus pop up like this, which you can mod over here. You can actually, it has a lot of game menus that give you statistics on everything. The amount of casualties you took, when you were attacked here. And what's great about this, what makes this game awesome is that it's in real time. But you can, you can um, uh, change the settings so that it doesn't pop up and just comes in your history at the bottom here. Because your history at the bottom records every event that's happened in the game. So you can uniquely craft this, this interface on how you want it to work for you. All right, so we've done that. Now at the bottom here, this is the, the terrain mode. There's your land mode, uh, your, your, your uh, terrain mode, and here's your, your, like your forests. Very important, critical in the game. You need to know because troops, you know, certain divisions, like tank divisions, don't fight well in the forest or the mountains or the hills. Uh, political, <clears throat> this just separates your political boundaries between your nations, so you can easily see this is Russia and I'm Germany over there and uh, Romania is over there. Uh, weather, weather's flipping important in this game. It it controls how you play the game. You can't just invade countries when it's you know when it's snowy and there's blizzards. It'll affect your troops in in, in realistic ways. So weather is important, uh, to, 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 I'm often in the weather screen. Then your economic mode, it just highlights what each, <clears throat> um, what each province is producing, you know, the, the infrastructure, the, uh, what, you know, what they make, if they're producing, like this, this, if you look at my tooltip, this, this province is making energy and it shows you how much energy it's making. Supply map, very important. Supply is critical in this game. Supply is the most important thing in any war game, and this game models it realistically and accurately. Partisan levels, you can't just take over countries and then just have them as working for you like willing souls. Uh, these, you have all your partisan levels, and they'll revolt on you, and they'll cut off your supplies, they'll damage your infrastructure. This is what Germany went through. Then the more you, the more you conquer, the harder it is. Uh, yeah, so that's your... That's your uh, partisan map. Then you've got your region modes. These are just large region modes. 
your area modes, your diplomatic, it shows you where you've got core, core uh, claims and provinces and cores where you own cores, and of course your victory mode. <clears throat> now I'm just gonna bring this up. The game is won by victory points. Each uh, certain pre key provinces in each country has is has a point value. Like if I click on uh, uh, Moscow, <clears throat> you will see that there's a little star there, and that's five points. If I capture Moscow, I get five points. And the winner of the country or the, the alliance that wins at the end of the game is the one that has the most victory points. And these victory points are dynamic. You can you can bring them down with nuclear weapons. They you know they bring down the victory point levels. You, you use them for negotiation, key provinces that you've conquered in a country. You can use it for peace, white pieces, you know, where you want to make a peace with a country, not necessarily annex them. You have to control all the key provinces of a country to annex them. So that, that you know, the, the victory points are the victory provinces are important. Then we've got um, at the top here, we've got our te intelligence. In the top row here, <clears throat> we have a highlight of all your of all our resources: the energy, uh, metal that we that we have in our stockpile, rare materials, oil, uh, supplies, money is important in this game. All of this is intertwined and connected. You cannot hope to win this game if you don't realize how to. And each one's a balancing act. You need every single one of these resources. Manpower. What the modders did. What Darkest Hour does. <coughs> Which is realistic is they they've taken the manpower of the actual country at that time uh the population of the world at that time and each country has a certain amount of manpower which you can increase via technologies and stuff so this makes the game so realistic because when you go and invade russia remember russia has mountains of manpower probably three times more than you have you cannot fight a war of attrition against uh, the the russians because you can't trade men for men you have to uniquely in 1941 defeat them outright in the field otherwise you cannot beat russia in 1942 or 1943 they too and the game shows you this it really shows you this uh then you've got nuclear bombs you've got descent very important this affects your transport capacity and your ic uh, it's so important you watch your descent uh transport capacity this is your overall ability to move men and machines over large uh, distances and it's affected uh, your supply affects this, your partisan activities. The more you conquer, the more countries you conquer, the more difficult it is to keep your transport capacity uh, up so that you can support your troops in the field. And your IC. The game is run by IC, it's driven by IC, which is industrial capacity, which is built by factories. It's a war game, but not only that, it also simulates your national mood, mood, of, mood of, your, of your population at the time. Uh, so everything affects IC. IC is key to the game. All right, and you've got these folders up here. We'll start with the intelligence folder. The intelligence folder is critical in this game. I'm just going to enable it. Let me just enable this uh, auto spying, which helps you. Uh, and you can you can do various missions against whatever country you want to select. You can sabotage the industry, and it gives you a percentage chance of it. And this is depending on your ministers you have, the size of your country, the distance between the countries involved. And also your intelligence technology reports to you, depending on your level, on various things that they know about this country. Like we estimate they have around 313 divisions. And it also gives you what we know about what they're researching. Critical screen to use uh, to set up correctly and keep monitoring the AL. We use this against you. It will disrupt your production. Very important screen. And it's, seen, it's really detailed and realistic. Technology screen. As I said in the beginning, this this technology screen lives and breathes in the game. I'm just going to give you a general idea. Here's all your I picked <coughs> the infantry technologies, and I'm just going to pick the logistics to give you an idea of what it looks like. Here's all your technology uh, uh, teams for that period. That with and each country is different. Each country has a unique technology trees that they all get as well. And I'm going to pick uh, IC uh, IG Farben. And I'm going to start that technology. So I've got seven techs that I can choose seven, and some countries only got three. So it's depending on the size of your country as well. Um, this game is realistic. You can't. It's not balanced. It's not a balanced game. It's a realistic war simulation. So you can't play as Luxembourg, which has got one single province and hopes to survive the war. It's, you can see how long you can last, but the game is is not about balancing all the countries so you all get an equal chance. It's a, it's, it's a uniquely realistic, uh, down to the tier, what it was like in the Second World War. 
and uh, so you get this and I'm starting to study and you get a little picture and it tells you all the modifiers and now these texts here uh, are the difficulty of that the historical year is important because you discover text if, if you're looking to discover text before the historical year you will you it'll you get a bonus to that if you're looking for texts that are very far in the future you you get penalties for that uh, <clears throat> so that's just a, a constraint in 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 the tree and then each tech tech has got various difficulties management uh, and they and and their sort of proficiencies that you need to discover and then you must try and match your your skills your overall skill is overall skill of I, ig far ben and you've got to try and find skills that like these sort of skills that match that so you can discover that as quickly as possible uh, so your industrial field just helps your manpower it helps your production it helps your uh, you know <clears throat> your your computing power and this is where you can discover uh, advanced uh, nuclear res uh, research and all that sort of thing. Land doctrines. This is where each country is unique in terms of their in terms of the way they focus on the overall uh, armies and forces for their nation. And this is overall the 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 the, the, the guiding force behind your land forces. Um, here, uh, Germany has discovered mobility fo is on the mobility focus path. I think the, the Russians are on mo on manpower, firepower, defensive, uh, firepower focuses Americans, and each tree in the land doctrines uh, 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 technology tree uh, specializes in that particular field. Like mobility will give your troops faster, make your troops faster and quicker, and your tanks better, and that sort of thing in depth uh your secret weapons now secret weapons are intertwined with this game various technologies in the game unlock these and unlock these at various times so you've got <clears throat> you can discover in 1951 hydrogen bomb icms you can build attack helicopters vital field secret weapons because this gives you this can give you an advantage in certain fields that you would not not normally have had uh, naval doctrine same as land, land doctrines, but for naval air doctrine same as the other, but specifically detailed towards your air, your air forces. And here you can look at all the units in the brigade, that the latest units you've got, the latest brigades you've got, and an overview of your entire technology of your nation. <clears throat> aircraft. This these fields like aircraft, armor, and industry. These fields are just for developing newer models of those specific planes, like CAS 1943, <clears throat> you get a Henkel HS-129, and when you discover 1945, you get a Henkel HS-132. Each nation, <clears throat> and I'll just give you an idea, here's the naval, here's all the battleships uh, and the armor tree. Each, just to give you an idea over here, each nation, and let me see where I can find the tiger, uh, yeah, see a panther. Now each Nathan has its own unique infantry, uh, well its own unique tanks and own unique forces. Like you won't this you won't have tiger tanks in America. You'll only have them in Germany. Uh, and in America you probably have Shermans uh, when you discover these tanks. So insanely detailed, insanely uh, covered right down to the to the details. So in 1943 you can then discover discovering the Panther. The Panther Five Orcs, a eh? you, know, you understand, and then of course infantry. Uh, infantry th this uh, works towards all your different infantry, uh, different types of infantry for the different years, and your logistics. It's vital for your transport capacity. Here's where you discover all your your strategic re redeployment efficiencies and all that come under the infantry branch, and then of course the industrial branch. I'm not giving justice. I'm trying the best I can. This is an insanely detailed and advanced war game that you know has no equal today. All right, so that's your technology tree. <clears throat> Economy screen is probably where you spend most of your time, besides being on the map. And this is also insanely detailed. I'm just going to go through it briefly. Basically, on the left hand side here, you've got all the stuff that you're building, and it's prioritized from the top. Um, and then you can you can build them in serial. This is in parallel, so these will essentially yeah they all come out at the same time, and you can then build them in serial. So you can you can ask the not just to have parallel. You can ask this one uh, to make when when the first one's finished to make another one, and then wait until that one's finished and then make a third one. There's a, you get gearing bonuses when you do that. So this there's advantages to both. So you have to think ahead and plan your your strategy with this. 
Then on top here, land divisions. Yeah, you can build all every single land division that you discovered up until now. Cavalry, motorized, mechanized, infantry, uh, light armor, uh, normal armor, HQs. And each uh, branch, each division, like each type of division, you can at create attachments. Too. Like infantry can have two attachments. So like your infantry division is not just a unit. It's made up of artillery, uh, anti-air, anti-tanks. Now, you can then uniquely craft each and every individual unit to suit your needs at that time period. <laughs> Where did they ever come up with such an awesome game? I mean, who thought of this? So, for example, I can attach a medium tank brigade to this. And it increases all these statistics. It makes me use more oil, but it makes my heart soft and heart attack more. And it reduces my softness. There's detailed combat is detailed in this game. I can't go through all of it. I'm just giving you an idea. Yeah, and you can then increase, uh, put a cavalry brigade. And these attachments can be added to your each individual divisions, and then taken away and added to another division if you you know if you need it somewhere else. All right, and then all of those brigade attachments I was talking about that you can add, you can build individually uh, as well later. So you don't have to always attach them here. You can build the infantry, and then later on build some attachments, and then attach them to the infantry. He has your air wing, all your planes, you can build cars. And these things are expensive and they take time to build. Um, for example, here's your cars close to your various models of close air support. Your uh, sure, your your transport planes. Uh, you can attach uh, escort fighters to them. This enables you to use paratroopers. And it also enables you to supply your, your troops in, in the field if they get cut off. So there's so many unique missions and things you can give to these things. And for example, the strategic, say the bombers. I mean, this thing costs 26 IC. I mean, you can build only a few of these. I mean, you've only got so much IC. And let me t t tell you, it's got 334 IC. This is not a lot of IC. When you're building troops, you're building tanks, you're building, you've got, I you've got descent against you. And yeah, you know, I build a st one strategic bomb bomber, 23 IC. So... Yeah, the game uh, shows you what things cost. It shows you what the, the nation, what the countries at the time had to face. Naval, I clicked on naval here. Every single battleship that you could ever dream of, of every model was is included here. Right through to heavy submarines and float planes that you can add to them. And attachments like torpedoes, which you discover in the tech trees. And improved hulls. And each and every single model is used for various purposes, like experiment, like ex escort carriers you'd use to hunt subs. So uh, detailed, yeah, right to the bottom here. Thing with a with a with a with a naval uh, 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 boats is it take if they don't cost a lot of IC, but they take a long time to build. So you've got to plan your naval strategy ahead. You can't just decide I'm going to build. Uh, battleships in 1940. It takes like two, three years to build a battleship. So, yeah, all right. <clears throat> this is that screen. Then on this side, you control your industrial capacity. You control how much of your resource, how much of your IC you will give to consumer goods, to production. This is the production. To supplies of the troops in the field. So everything comes off your IC. And your manpower is sucked from this as well for your reinforcement. I let the AI control it at times, but you can... You can right click on that and lock it. You can move the bars there. You can move the bars. You, you can control it how, how you feel you need to. And then it just lists your energy and all your, your resources here and your manpower and how much you're getting and how much it's, it's decreasing or getting by. You can ask the AI to control all your trades. Uh, to control the trades. This is a big help in the game. Okay, this wasn't in Hearts of Iron 2, the vanilla version. And the modders have added this in. And, and what this is one of the reasons why it makes the AI so smart in this game. Because the AI now uses these these um, um, auto auto controls. So the AI will then do my trades. And I can tell the AI what type of trades I want. You know, how what you know how I want him to trade. And he'll do trades with various companies, countries. And it's affected by efficiency as well. This screen over here, convoy skills. I just leave the screen. I've never actually worked this thing out. This is a complicated. This controls all the convoys around the tree, around the world. If you if you've got depots around the world where your troops are overseas and you've got to supply them uh, via convoys, you can set up individually all your convoy runs here and buy and your destroyer runs here and tell them like I mean it's so detailed. You can tell them like you know what to take, where to go. You know I I just let the AI control this because they are very good they are good at this um, this screen is very detailed and here you've got all the transports that are happening and 
between all the various depots you have and it shows you shortfalls and these are all the resource depots and you can then buy escorts and buy convoys uh when the when the when the when the actual ai then starts to bomb these convoys because the ai will interdict these convoys all right so this is the screen you'll spend most of your time there diplomacy <clears throat> well um diplomacy every single country in the world you can do uh various things with you can offer non-aggression packs you can bring them to your alliance you can share information you can offer trade agreements um each country has a little bit about them you know what kinds of packs they have this is where you control your 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 policy towards the outside world and on the screen at the bottom here you've got various sliders and you can only move these you see my mouse you can only move these sliders these affect the type of government you have you can only move, move these sliders once once every two years but they have lot, huge effects on your government uh, like for example, I'm highlighting. I'm sitting in an authoritarian uh, slider. I'm not democratic, so I can move it towards democratic. But then these are the things that will happen. I will get a dissident growth of minus eight percent, which is great. But my partisan activity will increase by four percent. So there's trade-offs in this game. So these are all the things you can do to shape. And when you move these things, especially the top ones here, these ministers change. So they affect the ministers that are in your government. <clears throat> One thing I must tell you, every single minister in the world at this time was covered by every in every single nation. Um, here are all your ministers for Germany, and each minister gives you benefits and disadvantages and advantages. Like Hitler will give you 10% plus on stockpile, but he'll also, your uh, let me just get it on there, your leader efficiency is minus 5%. So there's trade-offs. You can't change these guys. These are changed by, you know, moving this slide over here. But your other guys, like your ominous ministers, omin, omin, ominous ominous sorry, your head of intelligence, you can select other philosophies, other guys that will come in, and they will offer different influences. Like he, he basically um, can give you these sort of advantages to your to your to your intelligence community, but these guys give you other advantages. So different types in the different times in the game when you feel, and these affect all your troops and everything in the in the in the game. So different times in the game, you can shape your country to different philosophies if you feel that you, you're up against an opponent that, that, that you need to get an advantage of. Uh, the only thing with changing these uh, is that it affects your dissidents. You get a 1% dissident uh, increase when you swap a minister. So the game forces you to make these changes very minimally because it affects your dissident. Your dissident affects your IC and it affects it badly. So you've got to watch your dissident level um, um, in this game. So that's that's the diplomacy. That's just an overview of the diplomacy uh, 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 tab. Last but not least is the statistics folder of this game. In the statistics folder, you can give your you can look at every single aspect that affects your nation, like your uh, total maintenance costs, all your divisions in terms of arm, in terms of oil, in terms of supply. You can look at your army army maintenance costs, just of your army, the number of divisions you have, the number of oil usage, the manpower, the supply usage, every single statistic, the air wings, you can look at all your air wings, where are all your air wings, you can compare, you can make comparisons, naval comparisons with all your allies, you can look at your victory points, this folder is, is overwhelming. Uh, it covers every aspect of your nation where you can go and look and see where you're sh having shortfalls on this and that and supply and manpower, convoy summaries. Uh, geez, I can't explain this more enough. Also, your air unit modifiers in clear attack, blizzard attack, all that sort of thing. You can also go to look at your uh, naval commanders and your air and land commanders. It's where all your air wings are. And you can go directly to your air wings and have a look at them. Uh, have a look at the statistics and look. And th this is, you know, this is your air division here somewhere in, uh, this is in North Africa. And all the statistics for that as well. So the statistics folder is comprehensive. It's complete. It covers every aspect of your nation. Supply, oil, whatever the statistics you need are in the statistics folder. Now, I just want to give you an idea of the land combat. Here you've got all your divisions, for example. Uh, sorry, there's your combats. These are active combats that are happening at the moment. This is one happening between Slovakia and the Soviet Union. That's down here at the bottom here. And in, 
in the battle, each commander has his own uh, skill level and his, uh, his the amount of divisions he command. He can command, and it gives you in a combat. It, it, it applies all these details: the weather, the dissident levels, where he's been attacked from three the, the three different places, the uh, mountains, whether the mountains are come to influence this, and each you can look at each single unit. And the, the, the game simulates this realistic. You can look at each single unit and see what what effects. And each different unit, you know, you have one overall commander, but in each, all these might be controlled also by individual little division commanders. And each one of them is bringing their own uh, penalties and their own advantages to this, their own traits to this. Insanely complicated. Um, you can also, if you've got HQs in the nearby vicinity, just switch it to the weather mode, if you've got HQs in the nearby vicinity, there's an HQ there. This H, you build your armed forces around your HQs, and your HQs are the heart of your divisions. They're the heart of your army, and they give you various bonuses when they're adjacent or in combat. They give you like tactical advantages, breakthrough chances, and it's all determined by your land doctrines. Um, for example, let me give you an idea. I can go also. Uh, I can go and attack that country, that, that province over there. I've selected this. When you want to attack something, you get this little box and you can then determine what, you know, what time, what day, what month to attack, what year. And I attack that. And if I s then go right click with this one, I've selected this one in adjacent and attack that one, I can support that attack. That means he'll help this guy in that attack. Combat is insanely realistic and insanely well documented in this game. I can't emphasize it. Now, this guy here, who's in charge of this HQ, he will he will be in charge of these 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 divisions around him. So you build your infantry and your armored divisions around this HQ, and then he will give various bonuses and advantages uh, to their supply. So your HQs are critical in this game, and. There's the HQ there. It's got all these different statistics. It's not a very strong unit, but it's critical to your to your armed forces. Then each leader as well has a skill level, which they also have, uh, that they're good at. They also get experience, and they can get various traits as they grow in the game, as they get more combat, as they get better at combat. And you can pick and choose different leaders for these divisions. Um, it costs you an organization because your organization goes down when you initially do it. And you can also sift through various leaders with various traits. Fortress busters, when you're attacking a, a place that's got a lot of fortifications, you maybe want a general with fortress busters. His level that he is, he can bond nine divisions, his skill level, his experience, and his traits, like he's a winter specialist. This all helps you in combat. So, very important. Now, he, he, I've asked him like there, I've asked him to attack and I've asked him to support. Now, I can ask th these guys over here to support that, support the defense of this guy. I can ask him to support that defense at a certain time. I can also ask him to plan and a defense, plan, a de have a planned defense uh, as well in this province over here. Now, all these statistics for your land forces and all these missions and stuff, you can also use for your air forces as well. For example, this Air Force over here, I can right click over there and I can give him a whole ton of missions, complicated missions, like I can ask him to, to log strike in this area here or a region and I can give him the strength, I can tell him to do it day and night, uh, I can ask him to do an infinite mission. Air Forces are critical, you need to uh, concentrate in this game on getting air superiority, making sure you've got the best bombers available for, 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 for each task and each one has also got a leader which you can then also update and change and these skills change and also he gets better skills as he goes along and he also gets different traits just like your land commanders so the combat is is you you drive it through menus you drive it through your through your divisions it's just insanely complicated and and awesome um the naval side of it, I'm just going to give you an idea of the naval side of it. Now, your naval side of combat works a little bit different. Here, you've got all your boats, and they also have various, each boat is uniquely crafted with all kinds of various statistics that, 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 that this, you know, this battleship can do, and is controlled by a admiral. And you can give this guy, you can ask him just to go to a place, 
or you can give him a mission you can right click on there and tell him in this area i want him to do naval interdiction then this box comes up and you can pick the day you can pick him to do it at night night times days you can ask him to 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 do this mission both times you can pick a bigger area you can tell him to 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 stop if his organization or his uh you know his strength is below a certain level you can give him an infinite time to do it. you can ask him to attack convoys you can set the time and date this thing is just this game is realistic deep so and i can just give him this mission and i'll just say okay go now he will do this mission and there he goes there he goes he's now off he's gone to go and do this mission and he will he will fight the the battles there he will decide whether it's a good time to engage he'll do everything the ai takes control of that because you can't control every single unit in this game and that's why you have these missions that you give them so you're like an overall nation commander of this and then you then you know direct your forces accordingly the most realistic simulation i i don't know if i did justices you can't do it in the time i had but i try to cover it as much as i can um yeah so that i'm going to end it off on that that's my brief guide to hearts of iron 2 uh, darkest hour uh please if you like this video please share it and subscribe to my channel uh, the very best realistic world war simulation ever made period good day on you